Sometimes you want to make something that enriches your gaming experience. You develop the perfect class mod, and you know the exact abilities and equipment to make it a balanced Baldur's Gate 3 experience. You also know to make the animal aspect chimpanzee ability available at level 1, so you can throw food and drinks at your enemies immediately. Hey everyone, this is I'm Dr. Nada, and uh, a bit like the Spiffing Brit, whose channel that you can check out in the video description. I like things that just work and are balanced. This is why I'm going to show you all how to find all the IDs that you need to give your new Baldur's Gate 3 class and subclass mods whatever you want. Whether you want your character to start with the Cutting Words ability or Wild Magic Cats and Dogs to turn all your enemies into cats and dogs, I've got you covered. This is predominantly an overview video because it'll make all the content that I show you all easier to digest. If you want to learn how to make custom spells and abilities for your class mod, or you want to learn any other top picks, so leave your suggestions in the video comments. Subscribe to tune into my next video, where I'll show you how to make Peanuts Pig Pen, creating a series of custom abilities to make the stinky oh so charming. You know, Astarian adores it terribly. And refer to my past videos to learn how to make a new class mod with subclasses from scratch with links in the video description. Let's begin. Before starting, I will assume that you have one tool ready for this video, which is also conveniently required to make Baldur's Gate 3 mods, which is Baldur's Gate 3 Modders Multi-Tool. Still need to get it? Fortunately, I have a past video in the video description to show you all where to get it, how to install it, and get it going. Step one is to unpack the required game files so you can look at all the code, which is fortunately super easy. Go to your game folder and then the data folder, and then drag these following files into the blue box of your modder's multi-tool to unpack the files. It will take around 20 or 30 minutes to unpack all these files, but fortunately it requires minimal input on your part. Just enough time to drop a building on top of a Starion. If you're strapped for hard drive space, you can skip Gustav.pack, which takes around 20 gigs, which includes predominantly textures and some audio files, which are less relevant to what I'm going to show you all how to do over the next few videos. Step two is to organize the data so it's a little bit more easily queried. Make a single folder, which I call shared, and move the folders from your unpacked pack files from the modder's multi-tool unpacked folder into this common location. Step three is to start looking through these files so you can pull out whatever spell, ability, or feat that you want to add to your class mod. Like wild shaped cat so you can try soloing the game as a cat. Let's start with the public slash shared folder. Here we can review the files that my viewers have said they're excited to edit for their upcoming mods. First, let's look at the action resource definitions folder and its file. This is where you can get the IDs for the diverse action resource points, like the basic action point to the more complex eye stock action point. You can use these IDs to add even more ways of your characters doing interesting stuff. Second, let's look at backgrounds. This file has the IDs for a variety of passives that allow you more options for roleplaying, like a background of Noble or Outlander. So when Sean Connery says, there can be only one Outlander, we can kindly correct him. Third, let's go through the class descriptions folder, a folder that we've gone through extensively in my class and subclass modding videos. This file offers the IDs and information for every existing class and subclass in the game, from Barbarian to Ranger. Naturally, the handles are included, which you can look up in the localization folder at the file at the following path. Fourth, let's go through the feats folder, but more specifically, the feats descriptions file. This file contains the different feats that your character can have. 
from Defensive Duelist to Mage Slayer. Fifth, the Progressions folder has another file that I spent quite a bit of time with you all in my prior videos. This file is helpful because you can use it to make it so your custom class follows level progressions that are consistent with something that's existing whether a barbarian or a druid. So this is where you could find what you need to give your class polymorph at level one, turning early game mind flayers into sheep. Sixth, the races folder contains what you need to make a custom race for your game. You can change how the character sounds, producing an abomination like a halfling with a elf voice, for example, setting makeup options to only be those that are available to drow. Seventh, which is very valuable, is the stats folder. This folder is handy because you can look at what the starting loadout equipment is for every class which is available in the equipment.txt file in the generated folder. Placing this file in your class mod is enough to offer even more customizability with doing very little. You can take this even further by going into the data folder in the generated folder, because there are lists here with IDs for every ability, spell, weapon, and armor at your fingertips. Want to make an overpowered class? This is where you can find what you need to do it. Step four is using this information for good, not evil, my lovelies. So heaven forbid somebody here produced a crazy class mod. On an unrelated note, I'll show you how to make Peanut's pig pen as a rogue in my next video, where we'll give him overpowered weapons like bloodthirst and crimson mischief, foul toxin attacks that charm, naturally stealth, and means of casting irresistible dance on enemies every turn. Let me know in the comments what cursed mod that you want to make. As I showed you all in my recent Baldur's Gate 3 modding videos, making new classes and subclasses is just the start. There's so much that you can customize. And this video showed you how you can start going through all the existing game elements so you can add them to your own mods. Tune into my future videos to see how to do that step by step and produce even more exciting mods. And be sure to engage with my community content too. I recently asked my followers what I should name my incoming newborn son. Will had the most votes, followed by Gail and Raphael. So naturally, I'll name my son a combination of the three, or Rai for R for Raphael, Y for Will, and then E for Gale. Tune back in in 18 years to see how he, or whatever gender or non-gender they identify with at that time, feels about it. And if you found this video helpful, like, subscribe, and share it. It helps my channel a lot, and it could help your friends produce similarly creative things. If there's anything that you'd like to see, let me know in the video comments. Thanks for watching, and Starship out. And to think. I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies.